Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial. In this one we will be looking at how to create an occluded photo frame. Uh, please bear in mind the way I'm going to be going about doing this is not the most optimal way of doing it and it, there will be a part in this video where we will be talking about the proper way of doing it which would be to create a 3D model with a hole in it which we would create in Blender but this is a way to produce the same effect without any use of any 3D modeling programs or knowledge of 3D programs such as Blender or 3ds Max. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a project and I'm going to maximize this. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to use the plane tracker which will be our representation, which would be either our photograph or painting that we would use as our target. So I'm just going to simply click insert and insert our plane tracker like so. And what this will do is this will create our, this little blue box, which is our plane tracker object. I'm going to make sure my plane tracker is a child of my camera like so. And at the moment, this plane tracker currently has no targets. In a, another video, I'll show you how we can use plane trackers to add objects to our scene at any location we tap or set or any surface. But for this video, we're going to be using actual image data. So I'm just going to go and find myself an image that I'll use as my target. So I'll simply click on a little plus button next to our targets on our plane tracker select a texture and I'm going to choose an appropriate image for my machine to use as my image target. Now this image could be a JPEG or .png as long as there's enough detail within the image to be accurately tracked. So with my image imported, uh, in this case I've just found an image that I've been working on for another project. Um, in this image it's working in portrait, obviously this would probably work better for a kind of wide view image, so a 16 by 9 image would probably work better. However, this effect will work with any size image. So with my plane tracker selected, I'm just going to simply rename this to my picture frame, just so it's something I can easily identify. And all I'm going to do is with my picture frame selected, which is my image target, I'm going to right click and I'm just going to insert a plane. I'm going to drag my plane forwards just a tiny bit so like 0 0.4, 0 0.5 kind of uh, mark it. I'm going to drag it off to one side and I'm just going to scale it um, fairly wide on the X and on the Y. And I'm just going to make sure that I get the edge of my plane tracker to match up with the edge of my picture frame, like so. Uh, what I could do is I could also actually import a 3D model of a picture frame, so I'm just going to do it quickly. So a way around this is I could either create a picture frame in something like 3ds Max or Blender, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the inbuilt Sketchfab library. I'm just going to search for a picture frame. Let's just type in a picture frame in here, see if we can find one. Uh, view all and I'm just going to use a simple wooden picture frame that I've just found online yeah, and import that into my project and then make sure that my 3D model is also a child of my picture frame like so and I'm just going to have to scale this down until it sort of looks about right so I'm just going to scale this considerably more than I currently have So what I want to do is I want to make sure that my picture frame fills the outside boundaries of my image. So I just need to scale this a little bit by until I get sort of where I want it. Again, if you know the exact values for your image, uh, use them. Uh, however, I will be just doing this fairly fast, so there will be a little bit of trial and error on my part. until I sort of get it where I want it to be. 
So that will do for me. Again, ideally I'd want to make this in something like 3ds Max or Blender. But all I'm trying to do is just create a little frame to cover my image around the edges so it can mask where my plane occlusion areas will be. So if we go back to our plane object and I just go to Command D on a Mac or Control D on a Windows or I can right click and simply duplicate. I'm going to want to ensure I've got a plane to the right edge like so. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to again once more duplicate but this time on this duplication I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. on the Z axis. And I'm just going to bring this to my topmost edge of my frame. Like so. Ooh. Trying to make sure that I don't adjust other values in the process. And I'm just going to duplicate this one more time just to do the bottom edge. So what we've got now is our tracking image and these four checkerboard planes which are covering our edges of our frame. Now it's important to kind of note that this effect also works uh, really well if you wanted to create a kind of AR portal. Uh, in order to do that we would create our 3D scene again in another 3D modeling program ideally, bring it into our project and then we would create a cube which would also act as our occlusion with a hole cut out with a door frame in. So when we look for the door frame, we can see the 3D scene within. And then once we walk through this portal, we would be within that 3D scene. I'll try and cover this in a future video. Um, but just to let you know that the similar principles that we're using for this will be applicable for that one too. So with these four planes selected, I'm just going to go to material and click on the little plus icon and I'm going to create a new material and under assets materials I'm going to click on this new default material that's been generated and I'm just going to make sure the opacity is set to zero so you should see these four purpley cubes on the outside now the optimal way of doing this would be we would want to create a kind of 3D plane or cube of our wall or surface with the correctly cut out size of what our picture would be. Now I'm doing it this way because I'm trying to show you how you can do a lot of this stuff without using extra programs um, but just to let you know this is not the optimal way of doing this. Like so. So now I have my four cubes and my image target. I'll need some content to be shown through this sort of looking glass. So again, I'm just going to go to my AR library and just going to find, uh, I'm just going to use this little car here and just import this. Now I can bring in my little cartoon car back into my picture frame as a child, like so. I'm just going to, again, scale this down just a bit, like so. And what I will do is I should now be able to bring this into my scene. Uh, I don't want it all coming out of my picture frame, I want it to sort of just come out a little bit. And I'm actually going to angle this so it's coming at an angle like so. I'll just pull this down a bit more. So it's wheels are coming over the top of my frame. So what will happen now is if I was to plug in my mobile phone because uh, you'll need to you only be able to preview this on your mobile phone it's important to note the image target tracking won't work within spark ar uh, editor itself so once we plug in our mobile phone and we select the mirror option we will be able to hold up our image or point our phone at this image that we've uh, chosen and we'll be able to see this car object but as we move around as we move to this sort of angle here and this angle over here, the, we won't be able to see the car sticking out and it'll be kind of hidden behind this occlusion. So what this will create in essence is this sort of picture frame where everything that is within the picture frame is going into the wall rather than just coming out of the surface. And again this is more better demonstrated by actually seeing it in action so let me just 
get my phone ready and we will preview this in a second. Um, another quick thing just to highlight is it's always a good practice to save your project uh, and also quite often if you actually want to just directly mirror this to your phone you'll find it probably doesn't work straight away. So we need to make sure we save our project, save our file and then plug in our phone and click our mirror option. If you're using Android you need USB debugging enabled and the Spark AR application and if you're using a Mac system you'll need the Android file transfer application on your Mac. If you're using iOS, all you need is the Spark AR player application on your phone and your and your Mac will, should come up with an option to allow it permission to connect and transfer files for the purposes of testing. So with my mobile phone now connected to my Spark AR player, I now just simply need to make sure my phone is set to allow. And I should be able to now click on the mirror icon up at the top, which will now compress my file project onto my phone and it should open up my Spark AR player application on my phone so that now when I point my phone at the desired image, it should start augmenting. So as I now point my mobile phone at the AR target, you notice that the occlusion panels, which are our materials that are set to zero transparency, mean that when we look at the picture from angles from about 45 degrees to near on 70 odd degrees, uh, that the car should now not sort of appear behind the back of the frame and should give the illusion of the object actually going into the picture frame but also in this case popping out of the frame. Like I said before the optimal way of doing this is we'd want to create a 3D model of the surface of where our image would be with the whole cutout to be where our picture tracking would commence. If I wanted to, to remove the original image that's being tracked completely what I would probably do is I'd build a cube that goes behind the back of the occlusion panels uh, with a sort of texture within the inside of this cube with one side cut off, this one side being masked by our hole and our panels and this would allow me to create a kind of semi-looking city within a picture frame kind of effect. And we'll look at that in a future video when we, we cover this again and we look into the more advanced stuff that we can do with occlusion panels and occlusion textures in general. So I hope this has been of some use to you guys. If you have any comments or queries please leave them below and do not forget to like and subscribe if this video has been of some use to you. Thank you for watching.